number 10, we got a piecewise function, and the reason why I know it's a piecewise function is because I see these squiggly brackets, and then I see the subdomains. So it looks like um, I'm going to have this as a function for this subdomain, this as a function for this one, and finally that one for this. So three pieces. Now, these are kind of nice. These two, I don't even have a variable. I'm just going to have a constant. They're going to be three over this entire stretch. So it's just like, you know, I was driving the speed limit at three from negative two all the way to negative one, period. Okay. So from negative two to um, negative one, I was three. Okay. Uh, oh, oof, oh, ah, uh. eraser. Oh, that's like the worst kind of eraser. Ugh. All right, um, three here. Okay, now notice that that is open, and I know the lighting doesn't look like it, but that is open. That is closed. Okay, so closed, open. So from negative two to negative one, it's positive three. Now, uh, this one, I don't actually, that is not in slope intercept form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this. I'm gonna put the negative x plus two. The two is positive here and the x is negative. So this means that I'm gonna have a negative one slope off of the y-intercept of two. So I go to two, mark my dot, okay? And that's gonna go from negative one to uh, zero. Okay, so it looks like um, negative one to zero is actually this right here. All right, so they're just connected like that. Um, this guy is not closed, so we leave him open, but this guy is. When you go to zero, he is going to be filled in. All right, so we got this little, um, there we go, there's the shading better. Um, so that's fine, but then now <coughs> we're gonna have um, two. This guy's done. It's a very short function, okay? It was just a little jog down. And now we're going to be at positive two from zero all the way to four. And that is going to include positive two, but he's already included. So here and here were already included. Luckily, they match up or else we wouldn't have a function. And that's going to be two all the way to four. So we're going to go all the way to four, close that up because we do have a bar there, and we're going to fill that in. Okay, and that's it. That's the piecewise function. One, two, three. I went from negative two all the way to four. Okay, all right. Number 11 is actually now arithmetic sequences. So what you do, you're going to circle the ones that actually are arithmetic. Now, what we, if you remember, when we discussed these, um, it has to be consistent from one number to the next for the entire part that's given. All right, so... Um, let's start with A. Now we notice that we have a starting value, initial value of four, and it looks like it goes up by 10, by 10, by 10. So it's plus 10 every time that guy is arithmetic. This one is going down by four, down by four. One minus four is negative three. That guy's good as well. Um, it looks like I'm going up by 0.1 each time. Great. Okay, this guy is an increase of one. This guy is an increase of two. This guy is an increase of four. Okay, that is not arithmetic. All right, it should have been one, two, three, four. Now there's definitely a pattern here, but it's not arithmetic. Arithmetic is the simplest of patterns. It goes up or down by a consistent rate. Okay, so A, B, and C are the answers to that. All right, let's go to 12, um, 12 we skipped. Um, this is such a strange thing here. Um, this just says that I start with two and then I go down seven each time. But um, it's this this guy right here at C. But we're gonna we're not gonna do those. I I have no idea why our textbook has them. All right, now here we're gonna find the sum of the arithmetic sequence from 22, and it looks like it goes down by 11 all the way to negative 77. Okay, now what we can do is we're gonna actually have to be careful here because if I want the sum, I need to use this formula here. All right, and it's the uh, initial one plus the last one, 
We divide that by 2. All right. Now I got the a sub 1. That's 22. And I do have the last one, negative 77. But I don't know how many times this has gone down. Now what I can do is these two are close enough where I could actually count them. Okay. I think it's worth it to do. So I'm going to go just up here and I'm going to go negative 22, negative 33, negative 44, negative 55, negative 66, then negative 77. So that brings me to, let's count how many there are because that will be the number of, of iterations that I've done this dropping of 11. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 10 terms in the sequence and I'm going to add all 10 up. But I'm, could you do it in a calculator? Sure. I find that it's actually just easier to do it like this. We start off with 11, no, I'm sorry, 22. And then we end up with negative 77 and we will divide that by two. All right, so I do know that 10 and two are divisible. So that's gonna be five, that'll be one. This right here is adding that together is negative 55. So the sum of these two is actually um, five times negative 55. Five times negative 55, let's see, two, that's 275. So it looks like it's negative 275. All right. Okay, so now uh, 14, we have a theater. There are 12 chairs in the first row. Okay, so first row is 12. Um, each row has two more chairs than the previous row, and there are 10 rows. Okay, so I need to know how many chairs there are, which means I need a sum. Now the sum formula requires the first and the last and how many rows. Now I do know the end value. That's 10 rows, but I don't know how many are in the last row, okay? 10 rows is a little bit too far down the road for me to do. So I need the other formula. The other formula looks like this. All right, you start off with your initial value and then you add, okay, you add this little formula here and let's see what happens. We're gonna go 10 down the road. So we want, what is the 10th value? I started with 12. And I know that it goes up by two every time. And I know that there are 10 rows. That should not be plus, that's a minus. And minus one. All right, you were probably screaming at the video when, uh, when you saw that. Well, that's good. All right, so we got 12 and then plus two times nine is 18. So it looks like in that last row, we're gonna have 30, all right? So now I'm ready to go back to this formula. Now we practice those for a few days here. So we've got a, we're gonna go 10 rows. Okay, so 10, so 10. Uh, again, just like we had uh, 10 actual units up there, 10 um, values. And let's see, what do we got? Uh, first term is 12 and our last term is 30. All right, and then we will divide by two. And again, that's five. This adds up to 42, so 42 times five is 210. All right, let's see. 